Welcome back everyone to the Balls D. One Piece chapter 1027 has confirmed Oz and the community's prediction of Luffy taking on Kaido all alone to finally establish his position as the next Pirate King. Oh my god! Along with that, as we mentioned in the last few videos, we get to see the materialization of Yamato being the one true guide to Momonosuke and learning his newfound dragon ability. We mentioned time and time again on the importance of Yamato's character. Oda is doing this purposely because it's a foreshadowing to Yamato being the next member of the Straw Hats. To add to all of this craziness, we also are given some mind-blowing insights of the new race Oda introduced in the series. In chapter 1022, Marco revealed information he heard from Whitebeard of an ancient fire conjuring race who once lived on top of the red line. Whitebeard referred to this place as a country of God. Later we learned that King was amongst them called the Lunarian race and in this chapter we finally get the big reveal of his face. I'll be breaking down the importance and explaining why King had to hide his face to begin with cause let's be real ain't no way he's wearing a mask because of COVID regulations. This guy's looking like a gimp must be for some gosh damn good reason. Okay, so chapter 1027 starts with the conclusion of Niko Mamushi and Ino Arashi's fight with Jack and Pirospiro. These minks literally body the top side men of the Yonkos. Niko is on the ground alongside Pirospiro, who is knocked out. He covers his eyes with his hands, returning back to his normal form as he can't see the moonlight anymore. Wanda and Carrot comes to him as they ponder on how the moon suddenly showed up through the clouds. As they are talking about the sky clearing, we see the effects of this big clash Luffy and Kaido had in the last chapter. Onigashima in the air can now clearly be seen by the carefree citizens of the capital of Wano down below. Yamato sees this and recalls reading something to the effect in Odin's journal, which was in regards to the Pirate King Gold D. Rogers clash with Whitebeard, and how Odin also witnessed the heavens splitting. Now just to remind you guys, Odin's life and journal is depicted from chapter 959 to 973, where Yamato is referring to the events of chapter Chapter 966. This being pointed out once again gives us the idea of Luffy's progression being on the level of a Yonko. Now I read a lot of comments saying that Luffy isn't there yet and that this doesn't necessarily mean that he's at Yonko level. However, the heaven splitting is in fact a sign of two Yonkos clashing. We see this with Whitebeard and Roger, Shanks and Whitebeard, even Big Mom and Kaido back in chapter 951. The reason for this is because one of the strongest power anyone can possess in this universe is the power of the Conqueror's Haki. However, there is a clear difference between having it and being able to use it to his maximum potential. For instance, we know that Ace had it, we also know that Yamato has it, but that doesn't mean you necessarily be strong as a Yonko, rather is how you use it. This heaven splitting clash is due to the imbuement and outwards flow of Conqueror's Haki, which is something Luffy learned as he progressed his ornament Haki with the help of Hyuguro. I already explained how Haki has incremental stages to its use. I'm planning to make a dedicated video on this explaining it in more detail so make sure you guys have that notification bell dinged to stay updated with all our content. Coming back to the chapter, this clash is so huge that we see debris falling inside the castle and live floor as the whole island shook beneath the power of the two emperors. Yamato then starts bleeding from her head as a consequence from Kaido's parental beatings which once again reminds us of the level Kaido is at. Even after being worn down by all his previous fights he still has a lot of power. Obviously, Luffy is probably back to 100% or so after eating that good old meat, whilst Kaido just came out of battle against his own child. But this handicap doesn't really take too much away from Luffy, as we have to remember that initially the fight against the Alliance was also against Big Mom. Regardless, Luffy tells Yamato to go help Momonosuke, who is on the edge of the island, unable to jump because he doesn't know how to fly yet. Just do it! As we mentioned last chapter, that Kaido doesn't just fly through the air like a bird or Marco or even King. He is riding the clouds which he creates. Luffy yells at Momo to get a grip as he is about to fall off the edge. But Momo says that he knows what he needs to do. But it's not that simple to change oneself. Which is again quite deep. Luffy throughout the last few chapters is trying to push Momonosuke to be the man he desires to be. Break free from the shackles of fear that was constrained to him by Kaido's oppression. This is also something shared by Kaido 
inside his own child Yamato, which gives huge significance to their teamwork. Yamato jumps on top of Momonosuke's head and tells him that she has got his back. Momonosuke's face changes as his worries leaves his eyes, but the worries aren't over just yet, as Kaido chases after telling them to stop running. Why are you running? Why are you running? As he's about to catch up, Yamato blocks another hit from Kaido's cannibal. But Luffy, who is also stretching towards Kaido, yells at Yamato to not interfere. He wants to fight Kaido all alone. And Yamato understands what Luffy wants from her. You know, helping Momonosuke make Onigashima float and not crash into Wano. Onigashima is literally held up in the sky because of Kaido. And once Luffy defeats him, this island will come crashing down as there will be no one left to hold it up. Anyways, Momo and Yamato starts falling down Onigashima. Momo is flailing around like a fish out of water but Yamato tell Momo to grab onto the clouds which are forming around him and this is when the balls deep prediction theory comes true because Yamato becomes Momonosuke's teacher informing him on how Kaido uses his ability along with the fact that dragons don't fly rather like we said earlier they run through the clouds using them as stepping stones to parkour through the air this kind of reminds me of how Dor Flamingo could fly using his strings to grip the clouds Kaido and Momonosuke's ability to conjure these flame clouds is like a base set to the devil fruit ability making it another reason why Kaido is so broken. Mythical devil fruits usually tend to come with extra abilities for instance Marco's ability to heal however Kaido's devil fruit has currently showcased the largest range of its arsenal from unleashing a fire blast to creating flame clouds allowing the user to fly using these clouds to lift up other objects like an entire island to creating tornadoes to just transforming into a freaking ginormous beast of a dragon and the thing is all of this also applies to Momonosuke now. So after learning this, Momo quickly creates a cloud around his claws, gripping it really hard, propelling himself forwards. He screams out that he's doing it. He's soaring through the sky. But for sure, he has zero control over his movements. Let's not forget that even when he was a little baby dragon, he was able to do this. So subconsciously, he should be able to do everything Kaido is capable of doing. But anyways, I guess it's kind of like when you get a skateboard. You can accelerate forwards by pushing your feet back, but the control is harder to achieve so you end up hitting random walls. Anyways, Momo being propelled beneath the island starts getting bombarded with the falling debris due to Kaido's flame clouds weakening the grips upon Onigashima. As I pointed out earlier, this island is held up by Kaido's flame clouds that he conjured up. However, as he continues to fight and lose energy, his grip on these clouds also will disappear. So huge chunks of rocks are dropping down. Yamato hits a few away whilst telling Momo that the situation is dire now. They have five minutes to create stronger flame clouds than Kaido to keep the island afloat or else it would crash into the flower capital of Wano. What's more scary is that if Kaido is stopped right now, the island falls where it is. There will be massive casualties on the side of the samurai forces on Onigashima but also affecting the Wano capital. This threat is also posed by the massive amount of gunpowder and explosives inside of Onigashima. Basically, this whole island has a gosh damn giant floating bomb. Hey yo, what the fuck? Momonosuke starts panicking once more and says that they need to tell Luffy to stop fighting Kaido because you know if Kaido drops <laughs> the whole island drops but Yamato smacks him in the head telling the boy to stop being a moron and act like the shogun he claims to be. Luffy is carrying the whole weight of everyone's hope and freedom in his back right now. They can't burden him anymore. He's willingly holding everything by himself even though he can barely stand after fighting all night with Kaido, all G, Big Mom and all these big hitters in the castle. But Luffy won't rest until Kaido is brought down. The least they can do is hold up the island. So in the end Yamato's speech works and Momonosuke literally gets fired up. Next we move on to the life floor where King is going crazy. Attacking not just the enemies but his own crewmates too. Zoro gets hit with one of those air slashes busting through the wall crashing right next to Frankie who offers him a hand and asks him if he needs help. But obviously Zoro got this and he won't let anyone interfere in his bout. Plus if he wins against King it will be a testament to the straw hat's power. As of Recently, King's bounty has been revealed to be over 1 billion berries. And because Zoro wasn't present in the Big Mom fiasco, his bounty was even surpassed by Sanji. After Wano, when Zoro beats King and Sanji beats Queen, I'm certain both the bounties will exceed over 1 billion. And knowing that King's bounty is slightly higher than Queen's, it's likely that Zoro will once again have a higher bounty than Sanji. But on the topic of Queen, he gets pretty mad and yells at King to stop attacking their allies. He even almost hit Queen's 
Prince back with his attack. King however don't care as he responds, it's a pity that he didn't slit his throat. I can't lie, King's and Queen's relationship is kind of like a parallel to Sanji's and Zoro's. But through the crowd, some of the Beast Pirate mentions that the reason King is so angry right now is because Zoro managed to crack his mask. King gets even angrier and flies straight towards Zoro to land his aerial attack Tank Yudon. But Zoro is able to counter it with his own free sword style Ultra Divine Red Bull Tiger Hunt. <laughs> Let's be real, it's gonna sound much more cooler in Japanese. Tiger Hunt. And guys, if you haven't noticed, for manga readers and anime watchers, this attack of Zoro is actually a new move. However, if you watch the movie Stampede, then you likely already saw this move of Zoro being used against Admiral Fujitora, and it looks insane. But coming back to the bout, when both of the attacks clashes, Zoro is thrown back with King's mask cracked on the upper left side. As Zoro flies back, he realizes that he's going to fall outside of Onigashima. So to propel himself back onto the island, he uses his own two sword style clear lands which in kanji apparently means sky tanuki which makes sense because he's trying to maneuver himself in the sky. Zoro falls back on the ground panting exclaiming how close that was. Then looking super serious and badass he bashes King for not using his blade to take the kill. If you guys remember all the way back in the Bharati arc when Zoro first met a Mihawk we learn what it means for a swordsman to use his sword and finish the fight with the sword in hand. Now even though King wields a sword he honestly hasn't even used it much. Like Think about it, every time we have seen King, he seemed like a sneaky guy, kicking Big Mom's ship down the water, even calling the Toby Ropo by using Kaido's name. With King, it seems like efficiency is a greater priority than fair playing field. And not gonna lie, that's what a pirate should be, you know? We then witness King's cracked portion of the mask in a full view. We see his slick back hair and darkened skin. When Zoro tells King what he pulled is something unforgivable, King's response is the same goes for you, indicating how important it is for King for no one to see his face. Now it's either that he's hiding something ugly, similar to how Katakuri, you know, wore a mask because he didn't want no one to see his teeth. <laughs> You know what I mean. Or he's purposely hiding his traits to avoid others finding more about his race. And there are some speculations in the community that King actually has a tattoo which follows a flame like pattern. And we know that King's race being Lunaria which is associated with fire and light, this tattoo makes sense. Another thing is that fire is generally associated with the sun where Oda had purposely revealed information on a legendary figure known as the sun god Nika. I know I covered this back earlier but if you guys forgot, I mentioned it is likely that before the concept Exception of Marijoa and the war of the 20 allied kingdoms against the ancient kingdom, there used to be an island or at least residence for the followers of the sun god Nika. It would make sense since the red line is said to be 10,000 meters deep from the ocean level to Fishman Island and is speculated to be at least 6,000 meters above the surface, making it closest continent to the sun. There is also the whole concept of bringing a new dawn which in the community is Luffy's destiny to accomplish. This new dawn is for every single race on earth to experience the light of the sun. So the significance of the sun, the sun god Nika, its worshippers are highlighted throughout the series. Another point I want to mention is that Lunaria is Latin for moon-like. So like the previous theory that we mentioned about inhabitants from the moon landing on earth so earth can be a universal home for everyone, it's very likely that these people were from the closest moon to the sun. They amongst other living beings from different moons came to earth, possibly because the moon they were living on came upon a disaster forcing them to leave. Hopefully we'll find out more about King's past in the coming few chapters. Let me know what you lot think. Put it down in the comment section below. In the next chapter, I'm pretty sure we'll see what's happening around the map. What's happening with Nami, kids in law fight with Big Mom, Sanji's fight with Queen, and ultimately more on Luffy's progression in his fight against Kaido. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, ding that notification bell to stay updated with all our content. Till then guys, we'll catch you next time.